Hi, I'm Tom Vickers, Head of Procurement and Logistics at the Arnex Group. Welcome to Tea with Tom, a series where we sit down with our suppliers to talk all things supply chain. Welcome to Tea with Tom. In today's episode, I'm talking to Campbell King, the Commercial Director of MPD. Welcome, Campbell. Thanks, Tom. Now, Campbell, I thought we'd start out by asking you about what your favourite uh, biscuit is. It's a tough choice, but I'd say the ginger nut. I should have probably picked a softer biscuit, but it's the ginger nut for me. And why is that, Campbell? They last a long time, so growing up, I enjoyed milk, so I'd like to dip it in the milk and then make my biscuit last a long time. Yep. Because we weren't given too many biscuits in my household. And when we think about Arnott's, uh, a lot of us grew up eating it. What were your earliest memories of the product? I remember when we'd go on holidays, we'd go for a long drive to Finkel Bay and mum would give us iced Volvos, is what I called them back in the day. And I'd be able to eat the um, eat it in reverse. So I'd, I'd eat the cookie off the back, which was an, an art, leave all of the icing and jam intact, then eat the icing, then eat the jam. And again, it'd make it last a probably a good 15 minutes. Many people uh, obviously think about wheat as synonymous with our products, but also uh, dairy, probably our second largest input and, and you being the third largest supplier into, into our business. Um, phenomenal uh, contributor to the integrity of all our products. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about MPD and the products you supply. Sure, so I guess we formed in 77. And I think Arnott's was one of the first customers we had as a company. So it was started by a guy called Bob Forbes. And I think he identified a real need to support food manufacturers in Australia with, um, I guess, with continuity of supply. Um, having one company you could go to to get everything from, quality product. And he's consolidated a lot of supply around Australia back in those days and then really tried to identify what the customer needed from a solutions perspective, a service perspective. And that's the foundation that's really continued to this day. So 45 years later. 45 years. Bob was quite a, quite a visionary in terms yeah. of what he could do in terms of building a business. And I suppose when I think of that business today and, and how we interact, uh, you supply all our sites, including mm -hmm. including the Campbells, uh, our site at Shepparton, yeah, uh, where we get where we get cream and some cheese down there as well. So yeah. uh, it's tremendous uh, the spread across uh, all our sites. You know, dairy's key to key to a great chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, we manufacture all our chocolate in in Marlston at our Adelaide site. Mm. Uh, Campbell, what are the what are the key lines that you bring into that site, and and you know have you seen that evolve over time in terms of your supply into that site? Yeah, it's a probably it's an interesting one. It's probably now about four and a half thousand tons of dairy products would go across the sites. It's mainly milk powder, which would be used predominantly in the chocolate, and then butter, and anhydrous milk fat yep. in the biscuits. When we think about uh, great supply into our business. Uh, you know, I, I talk to my team about creating better business outcomes uh, for our business. So how, how do we get just that little bit better? And when I reflect on 45 years and, you know, I've been around for a good, more than half of that slice of time with you guys. Um, you know, I think about uh, great ideation. I think about um, great partnerships. Mm -hmm. And I think they're, they're, they're two bits that I reflect on, uh, you know, really favorably uh, given the amount of work that you've put into uh, particularly our chocolate supply chain mm -hmm. and some of the work that we've just done on really getting the right spec, uh, broadening the supply base to ensure, ensure better security out of ANZ for our key, key ingredients into that chocolate. And really, I, I feel better that we're now at a spot where we can be a lot more comfortable with our future dairy supply chain security mm. based on that work. And we've still got a great tasting chocolate mm -hmm. wrapping around our products. Yeah, uh, It's been a phenomenal bit of work. I think the other part that I didn't mention before is that the next extension is to try and control the solids. So I think in the last year, working with you guys on the full cream milk powder, was to actually get go to the farmer and then talk to the farmer um, about securing supply over the year. And that's entered us into a pretty new sort of territory yep. rather than just like taking the commodity from the dairy when they've got the solids available. For a portion of the business like 
securing that with the farmer, putting that into a dryer, which is going to make the chocolate you need. Um, and it also helps perhaps take out some volatility out of the market as well as providing security. I think it's also opening the door for some on the ground input and having a bit more direct input with sustainability, farmer practices, um, looking at what types of farmers we get the milk from and that they meet you know, the values and the, the goals that we've got as a business as well. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's really been the, the next big step for us is really how do we create a, a really strong supply chain, but how do we make that a very sustainable supply chain into our mm, business? Mm. You know, after 150 uh, plus years of the Arnott's business, uh, longevity and longevity with working with MPD for over 45 years, um, how you how you pursuing that, and what what things are you looking at to to help us on that journey? Yeah, well, for us, it's probably there's a few areas to, to it. Um, one is the resource that appropriately within our business. Yep. So we've we've been bringing on a, a someone that specialises in ESG and can really take those things forward because it is quite a special specialty area and it's been hard for someone to sort of add it on to other functions. So in the last 12 months, we've been able to take about half a million miles of or kilometers of trucks off the road through finding the right partners to keep the cream close to where it's been produced. Then an extension of that has been in the area of the milk as well. So Australia has always done what's called milk swaps to try and minimize freight. And so trying to like do that in relation to say your full cream milk powder and where it's gonna be collected from where we're going to send it to produce it. There's been some opportunities in those areas. Um, working with the farms in terms of like methane emissions, um, adding um, supplements like seaweed, et cetera, to their high protein feed in the milking stall. Um, those initiatives, and I think, and then on site, like at the factory themselves, like tr trying to partner up with factories that themselves have got really strong sustainability goals. So I guess there's those elements. And then the other one is probably the well-being area. So yep. MPD is like, we've been part of SEDEX for a long time. And whether you're gonna do your meter four pillar audits to make sure that there's good practices on the ground. So yep. we're, we've been doing that for some time. But I think um, actually getting on the ground with the farmers in terms of sustainability, social welfare, there's a real need. And I think there's a real opportunity for good partnership on the ground with farmers to help them have sustainable practices Succession planning is a real problem, a real problem with the value of land so high, yep. uh, there's an opportunity to just exit the industry. So we've seen that industry drop in Australia by 300 million litres this year. On the ground initiatives don't often get high profile recognition, yep. but I think it's something that we need to play a role in in terms of in, in those types of areas. Supply continuity is a key for our business. Yep. And if you don't have that, you don't have a business. I think another big part of it for us is the ethics and partnering up with producers who are ethical in terms of how they operate, how they contract with you, how they, they, they you don't want people that, people let you down. People say it's too hard, we haven't got stock and they walk and trying to like insulate yourself from certain um, processes that may do that, it's important for us. Yeah, and I think also when you think about the products that, you know, go, that have a large dairy proportion across our range, uh, and how well loved they are, uh, and how well supported they are by our by our retailers. Uh, you know, I imagine over the time of forty five years, Campbell, there's been a lot of a few stressful moments. Mm. Uh, un, unprecedented demand comes through. Uh, probably COVID was one of those that mm -hmm. drove a lot of people uh, to to live and work from home uh, a lot more and uh, isolate. Uh, how, how do you how have you dealt with those because uh, that that demand for the product and particularly as you're a key contributor to to, to those you know it, it's relentless how do you how do you plan better to get around that well I think you have to have a really broad supply base to start with certainly one of our strengths is being able to foresee problems yep. and try and predict problems um, and the full cream milk powder is a great example when Australia stopped making yep. whole milk and we had to switch to New Zealand, but we'd done the groundwork with you guys it, six months earlier. We'd already done that groundwork and had those options, you know, plan B. I think in terms of COVID, we had all sorts of weird things happen. So there was a lot of surplus food service lines, yep. um, which came into the market. 
but then there was a, a huge shortage of of commodity lines due to well, world demand was strong, world supply was was a, a problem, and that did certainly throw some real challenges at us over the last two years. How about uh, the fact that you know we've come out of a huge COVID surge, uh, and to your point, you ha- you've had to think differently about supply. Um, you know, just just to help people appreciate how how high you know compared to historical averages. We're seeing, you know, thankfully, we've just started to see some turns on the market. But apart from the farm gate milk price being high, the the components that are getting obviously made by the dairies, you know, they're sitting at at world highs at the moment. Talk a little about that and and and, and how you manage that. What you what you think's around the corner for the dairy industry? Oh, Tom, that's a tough question. I think the, the fundamental thing behind it all is probably supply yep. globally. And I think we take, just when you think you might have an idea that Ukraine happens, um, we've got stories now of Europe not being able to potentially run their dryers. So they're going to, they're throwing milk into cheese. Because of energy. Energy. Yep. So they're throwing milk into cheese. So there's going to be a shortage potentially of skim milk powder, for instance. Um, that's a curveball. And I think one of the challenges with dairy is that only, um, say the minority 7% gets traded around the world most of it just gets used in the country it's made so therefore it doesn't take much to swing the dial there's no real established futures market so when you've got a free market and this small amount of volume being traded the Ukraine can have a huge impact or you can have like the Chinese lockdown having a huge impact at the moment probably being the main thing causing the market to come off but if supply chains start opening up it could drive the market up. We've seen the highest milk price we've had this year, yet the industry contracted. Next year, we're gonna see the price go up maybe 15, 20% to the farmer. Good for the farmer. It'll be interesting to see if it stops the milk contraction though. And that milk price is now at a point where if that global market comes back too much, the dairies won't be able to afford to pay the milk price. Yep, yep. And that's concerning to me. And I think if, the milk price falls in subsequent years without the cost of production falling, then we could have a sustainability issue on our hands with the industry. But I think, um, yeah, well, time will tell. In the meantime, we've just got to do our best to make sure we've got, got supply. And what's the, uh, as the MPD business is, has been growing and developing, what, what's the future looking like for MPD? Yeah, it's looking good. Look, we've um, we've really invested in people in the last year. Yep. We've really, I guess, changed the structure of the business in terms of becoming not a corporate, but much more, um, well, I guess, a larger structure with much more support around the operational side, the finance side, the commercial side, risk and governance, sustainability. We're the principal partner for a lot of the big dairies. Yep. And I think that's a reward for the way we've conducted our business. It's not... It's not like based on, a, on an exclusive legal arrangement. It's based on performance. Like it leads to good ar- to arrangements, but it's based on doing the right thing, having integrity. Really, after uh, you know forty five years, I'm you know the the progress that you've made around uh, great ideas that help create business value for us have, yeah. has been phenomenal. And you know, I reflect on the on the work recently. Uh, the idea of partnership, uh, you know, you guys have, have lived into that for a long time. I mean, it's it's what your business is built on. Uh, yeah. It's I, the real point of difference. I, I think for us too, like, well, obviously we really value the Arnott's, really value the Arnott's relationship. And for us, it probably does set a bit of a model and a benchmark for what we'd aspire to with our other customers. So if we can get to that point where you do, like we've got a five-year arrangement where we're, able to then absolutely commit and focus on the solutions, you know, at the fair pricing, but you just can really focus on the right things. Yeah. And I think Arnott's really does value those, you know, the continuity of supply and, and then driving for that. And you need the headspace and the time to be able to focus on those things that they can take us forward. So, you know, as I, as I think about the next few years ahead, it's how do we, how do we you know, ensure that supply that you do a great job on? But how do we get to a heightened level of sustainability between both our businesses, the dairies and the farm, the great farmers that supply mm. the milk uh, that's so critical for, uh, 
what we all enjoy in our products. Yeah. Uh, but really appreciate you spending the time today, no, Campbell. Thanks for having great. me. Thanks for having me. Thank you.